All right, and welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create better content using the OpenAI Playground. Now, some of you are out there using ChatGPT, other AI writers. You're really not capitalizing on what is available to you. And I've noticed this on a lot of other videos, and I haven't talked about this, but I do want to make a video here to show you what I'm talking about. So we have this Playground area. This, of course, is located at platform.openai.com. And it is an area or a playground here where we have a number of different options that we can tinker with when we're creating content. Now, over here on the right side, of course, you want to make sure that you switch to the mode called chat. Okay, so chat's gonna allow us this interface here and you'll have access to the model. Now, the model you have is gonna depend upon what you've signed up for, what you have access to. But if I click on this, for example, I have a number of different options. I have chat GPT-4. I have GPT 3.5 Turbo and these other miscellaneous ones, okay? Now I'm gonna show you why that's important. Number one, I think we all know at this point, there's been lots of videos on this that uh, GPT 4 produces some really great content, but it is not 100% necessary. Depends on the kind of content that you're creating and the niche you're in and so forth. But for this, um, the reason why this is so important to be able to use the playground is this section over here called System. Now in this section here is where we can paste in all sorts of background information for the system to hold on to or to reference when we're creating content. This is super, super important. So some of you are just typing stuff into ChatGPT and telling it to produce or write content and hoping for the best. Now, if we wanna create more unique content, better content, we're gonna provide that background information to reference for the system to write our content. So over here, and one of the problems is I should back up and say with um, uh, ChatGPT and these more limited earlier models is how many tokens it can use. If we click over here and we go to the maximum length, it'll say, for example, the maximum number of tokens to generate requests can use from 2048 to or 4000 tokens shared between the prompt and the completion. Right, so you're gonna be limited for how much information you can put in here. If you max it out here, then you're not gonna get a lot of output and vice versa, so you have to have balanced. But if we go over here, for example, and we click into ChatGPT, I keep saying chat, ChatGPT4, and then we go over here, our maximum usage is going to allow us to be much higher. So we're gonna be able to put more stuff over here Right, This system uh, in a log space is gonna be able to be much longer to generate more content, okay? So that is kind of the magic. I think right now we're capped at around 8,000 total, but the point is uh, very soon, we were kind of promised, I believe, to be able to go up to 28,000. That's incredible. You'll be able to put pages and pages of content uh, over here to be able to create new content. So that is gold. So what I always do is put the maximum length in there. Uh, let's say I'm going to use uh, GPT-4 at the moment. Now, one of the cool things that you can do as you're creating content is to reference content that is already novel, unique content, and good content, all right? So one of the things I, I showed in another video is how to actually take a look at whatever your niche is and pull that content from YouTube videos. Now, you might be wondering how I do this. So what you're gonna do, let's say for example, I wanna write something on how to write blog posts. So go over here to YouTube, the top ranking video is from Neil Patel. I can grab that URL. And what I wanna do is to go over here to a site called youtubetranscript.com. So what this is, it's free. It, this is all that is right here, is you could just plop in a YouTube uh, URL. So let's just put that in there and click go. And literally within two seconds, we now have a full transcript of that video. Now this video is not very long, it's five minutes and 51 seconds. But of course we know that Neil Patel, history of always producing awesome content. So we can go through here and we can grab that entire transcript, okay? Overran it a little bit. And we can actually put that into the playground system. So if I paste that in there, now, what's happening is that becomes reference material to write content over here, okay? So the AI is gonna look at this and say, all right, this is the information I'm gonna pull from in order to write this. Now, I think where people tend to get stuck also is they keep thinking about how to write entire articles. Yes, that's one way of doing it, 
but just remember the more you try to get that entire thing written as a whole and just automatically do it with AI, the quality is going to drop. So it depends on the content that I'm creating, but for the most part, what I like to do is actually use this for sections. So you would map out your entire blog post based on processes that I've shown previously, but of course I'll be making more videos on this soon. So you would map out your blog post and you can use this process to write out the individual sections in the blog. And that way you don't overrun your token usage and you can create the best quality content and you can kind of curate it as you go. So for example, if I were to put that in there, okay, then I could say over here, um, we're going to write a blog post about or I should say with the title, how to write blog posts. And we can add all the usual stuff. I'm not going to go through every little piece of it here, but we could say uh, use H2s, H3s, and a conclusion. Okay, so let's just say that we're going to do that. And then we go just go over here and we click submit. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna use that information in order to write that article. And of course, as you can see here, um, it's a little bit slower because we're using GPT-4. If you use the turbo model, this output is quite a bit faster. But of course you can compare the two. And of course, keeping in mind that when you're using GPT-4, you are using uh, the API here, which is going to cost probably pennies 10 cents or something like that, right? So I only am gonna be using GPT-4 when I need the highest quality content on certain types of niches, okay? So again, this is where a huge benefit here is using this background information to write this. If you're using product reviews, you're, um, or you're writing product reviews, or you're going through very specific stuff, you can take that content from wherever and put it in here to make your article. Now, another little quick trick that I'm gonna show you too to get factually correct information is to use another tool and it's called perplexity. So it's perplexity.ai. So you can come over here and you can ask perplexity any question and then select the source that you want it from, okay? And it will have references for where it gets that information from. So it's not just hallucinating things, right? So if I go over here and I go how to write blog posts, and then I click enter. Now what perplexity is gonna do is to find quality content for you. So it's got this stuff right here, okay? So this came up and we could see what it referenced. It pulled it from WordStream, HubSpot, Masterclass, Smart Blogger, and YouTube. Okay, so that's relatively credible information. So I can actually copy that information and go back over into Playground and I can stick that in there and write sections using that information. And that way we're getting higher quality content and we're getting running less of a chance of getting content that the system is hallucinating or creating that is factually incorrect. So that is another little trick for creating high quality content. So we can grab things that are already good from YouTube and we can use perplexity and we can mix and match in order to create the best quality content using the playground. So this was just a quick video I wanted to show you because some of you are not using this tool. And of course, uh, if you have some other questions about this or how this process works, comment below. Let me know. I'm curious where you, you might be succeeding or where you might be actually failing in your content production and where you need help. It helps me create more videos on these topics. So if you like this video, want to see more of this stuff, of course, hit the like button hit the bell to get notified and subscribe to the channel so you can see more of this stuff. And of course, as I said, comment below, let me know your thoughts. I'm super interested. Thanks for watching.